Welcome back to 30 Days of Persuasion Plays. Today we're going to talk about a classic self-improvement principle that I picked up from Brian Tracy about 20 years ago. And that is that enthusiasm is contagious. So what does that mean? It means that when you're truly, first of all, let me circle back to something that has to actually do with persuasion. One of the key fundamental power movers when it comes to persuasion is charisma. When you're in the presence of a charismatic person, they have the ability to almost cast a spell on you. So if we look at Hulk Hogan, right, classic wrestler from the 80s, if we look at him, he wasn't the most technical wrestler. He didn't have this arsenal of different wrestling moves that he used, but what he had that was bigger and better than everyone else was his charisma, the way he could talk in front of the camera, the way he would come out walking down to his music, the way he would get the crowd involved when he finished a match. His charisma was unmatched, right? And so charisma is very powerful when it comes to persuasion. And enthusiasm is very, very closely related to charisma because oftentimes people become charismatic as a result of being enthusiastic about something. So you have to learn to really be genuinely enthusiastic about whatever it is that you're trying to persuade people to do. You know, this is a big one because if you don't have enthusiasm about whatever it is that you're trying to get people to buy into, how could you possibly expect them to be enthusiastic about it? Now, right now, you may be in a situation where you feel like there's nothing to be enthusiastic about when it comes to what you're persuading people to do. So maybe you're in sales and you know you got this job because you, you need to pay the bills, but you're not really enthusiastic about selling whatever it is that you're selling. You're not enthusiastic about the pro you're not enthusiastic about the product itself, so to speak. And so what I want to share with you are some ways to find that enthusiasm. Now, like I said, just because you're not enthusiastic about something doesn't necessarily mean that you can't persuade somebody about it. I mean, timing and circumstance play a big role in everything. If you were on your way to a job interview and all of a sudden your GPS or your phone died and you couldn't access your GPS system and you pulled into a gas station and a homeless person started giving you directions, that person's credibility and expertise would be on a level 105 simply because of the context and the circumstance. Even though that person is homeless, they have the answer to what you're looking for. So context and circumstance play a big role in persuasion as well. But enthusiasm supercharges it. So what I'm saying is that it's not like if you don't have enthusiasm, you can't persuade people. But having enthusiasm enables you to persuade them a lot easier. Right? So how do you find that enthusiasm if maybe you're not specifically enthusiastic about what it is that you sell or present to people? So find some aspect of the offer that you're enthusiastic about. You know, maybe you're enthusiastic about the change that it's going to bring within people. Maybe you're enthusiastic about the process of presenting it to that person. Maybe you're enthusiastic about that paycheck that you're gonna get and be able to pay your rent or buy your kids something. Find some aspect of the offer that you are enthusiastic about. Because I can guarantee you, if you search hard and long enough, you will find something to be enthusiastic about. And then just simply transfer that enthusiasm to your interaction with somebody so that they then become enthusiastic about your product, service, or offer. Next is, once, once you find what you're enthusiastic about, tell people why you are enthusiastic about this particular aspect of the product. Now, obviously, if the only thing that you're enthusiastic about is the paycheck and you're trying to sell somebody something, you're not going to want to talk about that. So if, if the paycheck or the monetary reward is the only thing that you can find to be enthusiastic about, then skip step two. Just use it to be enthusiastic 
about presenting your offer, but don't tell people that that's the reason why you're enthusiastic about it. But if you can find something about the product, service, or offer that you are enthusiastic about, tell people why you're enthusiastic about it. You know, when I used to sell gym memberships, I wasn't in enthusiastic, so to speak, about the actual gym. I mean, I worked in a nice gym on 51st and Lexington in the heart of Midtown. This wasn't a, you know, some basement gym. It was a really nice corporate facility, 15,000 square feet, had 50 people working for me, all corporate executives working out there. But, you know, I wasn't so enthusiastic about the actual facility. What I was enthusiastic about was the fact that I was selling something to somebody that could truly change their life. And so because of that, I was never afraid to hard sell them. So let me explain what I mean by that. I convinced myself, and I still believe this to, to this day, that fitness and health is really something that you don't have to feel guilty about pushing somebody to buy into because it's only going to help them. And so anytime a person would start resisting me or giving me objections, I would not feel guilty at all about going right back at them and pointing out why they need to get started today because it's not like I was selling them a car that could potentially break down in a month or a stock that could plummet or a piece of real estate that could go down in value. I had none of that. I was selling them something that could potentially change their life, make them look better, make them feel better, add years onto their life. How could I not? be enthusiastic about that. So again, I wasn't enthusiastic particularly about the location or what I was physically selling them, but I was enthusiastic about the results that I could get for them. In what I do now, I am very enthusiastic about the principles that I teach people, but more than that, I am enthusiastic about the results that I know people can get with what I teach people. So again, find some aspect of the offer that you are enthusiastic about because it may not, act, may not be the, the one thing that's so easy to see. Tell them why you're enthusiastic about it and then tell them why they should be enthusiastic about it, right? So once again, persuasion is never about you, it's about them. So in the process of telling them why you're enthusiastic about it, yes, you want that enthusiasm to be contagious, but you don't want to spend so much time talking about you. You want to start talking about how this can change their life, how it's changed the lives of other people similar to them and why they should be enthusiastic about it. So when you combine all of those things, when you combine the fact that enthusiasm is contagious by itself, right? Even if you don't tell people to be enthusiastic about it, it's contagious. So it's like, if you sneeze on somebody and you have the flu, you don't have to tell them to get sick. It's contagious. They're going to get sick no matter what, right? So the same thing happens with enthusiasm. If you're really enthusiastic about something, it's going to be contagious. But if you then supplement that with why you're enthusiastic about it and then why they should be enthusiastic about it, it's like taking that enthusiasm and injecting it with steroids, it becomes that much more powerful. So remember, enthusiasm is definitely contagious. So find some something about your offer that you are enthusiastic about, tell people why you're enthusiastic about it, tell them why they should be enthusiastic about it.